What's going on guys? Welcome back to another great Madden video I got for you guys today. And yeah, it looks a little different, but this is something we're gonna be experimenting with and just testing on in the future. Um, you know, we always love to do these in real life videos, these IRL videos, and I know you guys like them a lot. And you know, due to COVID and all that, we have been kind of lacking on it, but you know, we're trying to get back into it with the Madden, the tips, the tricks, and the IRL stuff. So without further ado, this gameplay, is me versus J Wall with the side cam. Obviously, I'm looking at it right now. Um, so, you know, whenever there's a funny moment or a big play, I'm gonna be just looking to you guys and breaking it down a little bit. Or even if I have some, you know, game to give you guys. So, you know, whether it's a free tip or it's like why I made that adjustment, et cetera, et cetera. It's a lot of great stuff on the way. And this is just the beginning of it, boys. Stay tuned to the video. If you like this type of format, let us know. Um, let us know what we could fix and do better on. And like always, please hit that sub, sub button. Please like it up. Please comment and share. Each day we're trying to just grow and grow and grow and that's really all it's about. Catch you guys in the gameplay. All right, boys. Now onto the gameplay. Um, I'm gonna be playing J Wall. This is my first ever game. Rematching him after obviously the club's defeat. Uh, shout out to J Wall. Amazing Madden near one of the best ever runs. And not only, you know, just the club's tournament itself, but he was on a tear in the college regs tournament i believe he won that and you know it's just a crazy streak he was on at that time it's around madden ball so you know everyone is locked and loaded and you know ready to you know get their first of all madden ball team madden ball teams um all i got to say about that is stay tuned for the draft to see who i draft i'm gonna make sure to put all that info in another video and lastly just everyone is you know on the top of the game everyone knows every glitch out in the game every you know secret um every bit and piece of info is already out there and at this point is, you know, if you could capitalize, if you could play good defense, if you move the rock on offense. And yeah, man, this is a high level gameplay. I'll be breaking it down a little bit and let's just get in the gameplay. I've done already enough talking. So guys, if you don't know what this is, uh, why we're playing, this is a uh, Pro-Am, Mutthead Pro-Am tournament. So basically I'll break it down really fast for you guys. Pro-Am basically means uh, I'm on a team. So on this team, I have myself, uh, I have Wesley, I have Kiv, uh, those guys are all on my team. And then uh, the other two guys, so it's a team of five, the other two guys is uh, one Navy vet, shout out to our Marines, our Navy uh, Corps, every, all, everyone who uh, works with the military and all that type of stuff. And the other person we have is AJ Dillon from the Packers, an NFL player playing against an NFL player. Their NFL player is Noah Fant, ours is AJ Dillon. So our team is... Me, Kiv, Wesley, uh, Navy Vet, and AJ Dillon versus D Croft. Uh, Kiv is going to be playing D Croft. I'm going to be play, playing J Wall, and Drini is going to be playing uh, Wesley. So I know it's a lot of info. Break it down a couple times, rewind it if you have to. But basically, this game is for two thousand dollars. And you know, there's a lot of uh, it's a lot of what's it called pressure when you're on your, uh, when it's based on your team. You don't want to let your team down, so on and so forth. And boys, this is kind of reminiscent of the Madden Bowl that's going to be happening uh, very soon. I'm going to be on a, a couple players' teams. I'm going to be drafting two players. I am a captain, of course. And, you know, like I said, this is a good experience and a great tournament to have. And also, you know, you can win a little bit of money. As right here, j is going to run the ball on third and five. And now it's a fourth and five. So big fourth and five early. I really like the tone that my defense is playing at. You know, these trips guys could be very high pace. And I feel like he's kind of just a little slowed down right now. And that's the way we like it. And right here, big fourth down, guys. I'm going to be in the one, four, six, just trying to scream at him one time for the one time. And uh, I'm in a man line look. I nudge my corner on the left so he stays. I manned up the tight end. I'm running a cover three. Uh, to the right, the left, and obviously the middle. I hit the guard. I do scream. He hits it to Derrick Henry, but he breaks the tackle forward. We all got to love that. I mean, not a bad read, just a safe, easy read to get the first down. But of course, Derrick Henry got to be the horse that he is. Uh, just, just eats the hit stick for a first down. Right here, guys. Most people in trips like to run the ball on first down if you give them that look. That's why I have my D-line spread. Is right here. He has a curl route wide open. And that's that TNC trips. There's a little curl route here, a little hitch route there, a little out route here. <laughs> we all know that TNC trips. It's right here, boys. I have my D-line spread. And, uh, you know, if I if you have your D-line spread, people will run inside zone on you. And I know people like to run Pat's trips now. So, you know, there's that look of uh, inside zone and base. It's right here. He's going to pass the ball. I run a cover to the outside, and he recognizes it right away. 
Um, I, I feel like every time I run cover two, I, me and my boys had said this, even if I have a zone drop cloud, these dudes always have a streak on the field and they always literally identify and attack like right away. And the thing about cover two boys is, you know, I can move my uh, deep half all the way out there, but at that point, they're gonna know I'm in cover two. I'm gonna try to scheme around it and find something, you know, just to throw them off their guard because you don't wanna always just tell your opponent you're in cover two. It's right here, guys. He's gonna highball a wide open pass and that's the game we play, man. Um, you know, that 100% should have been a touchdown. He gets cheated. Um, but you know in reality he shouldn't have highballed it I've done it many times and it just sucks, but it is the way the game is you're gonna overthrow some easy high balls um, It always happens whether it's this Madden the Madden before um, The only exception I'd say is Madden 19 boys Madden 19 highball lags are crazy It's right here, man I'm gonna do a little send two meta a little zone drop defense and honestly it played really good He could have maybe thrown Julio, but I think it would have been a pick It's right here our send two is gonna get there and, you know, he does take off for five yards, but I'm really content with that. You know, don't let up a touchdown at this point. Hold the three is the key. Right here, the same thing. I decide not to go in one four six, boys. I know it is a third down, but the thing is he's in the red zone. He's going to guarantee himself at three at minimum. Most, more than likely, he's going to run. And it would suck to give up uh, a touchdown on the run. But right there, I'm going to rewind it real quick, boys. The reason I'm rewinding this, boys, is I do a nice adjustment, man. Look at the le right side. I'm going to man up Ricky Jackson to his running back table route. For a second, Ricky Jackson jumps and thinks he's going to blitz, but then he just jumps out and almost snags that interception for us. So a nice adjustment for that table route cheese that a lot of people like to run is you can man up your DN, and for a split second, it will look like he's blitzing, and then bop, he just jumps out, either puts his hands on the ball, or even it sometimes, more than likely, he will intercept it. I've seen Clowney do it. He's done it to me personally. Um, it's just a nice adjustment when you're sending the house and people are like, you know, sending out five You can easily man up that guy with your DN even your linebacker and it's gonna bait them and you never know You'll get an interception boys in this video. I am running the Seattle playbook I know I'm known for that Jets offense I feel like Seattle clear out is really good and right here. We're gonna be cheesy We're gonna be a noob. We're gonna run a bubble screen early because we're just trying to get to a hash so um, the thing for me boys is that a lot of people know how to shoot these inside zones these bases out a bunch and you know why start off on a second and 14 when I could easily just you know run that 0-1 trap concept or even just pass it out wide like I did and get a bunch of yards like that you know at that point I'd rather not get blown up and get put on a second and 13 and rather than you know I'll just run a bubble screen because it, it works a lot of the time man honestly right here we're gonna motion out Andre Johnson uh, we're using Kittle, Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, quite a bit of new players on our team. It's right there, Keenan Allen. First dot goes to him, um, and, you know, it's just an easy playmaker dot for six. It's right here, man. This is going to be the final play before the first quarter ends. And, you know, just a short side combo. I'm trying to bring back long side dots, short side dots. It's right here. We low-key had a couple players open. Uh, honestly, it was just a playmaker. I really didn't know what was going on with that uh, guy manned up to the tight end. It really didn't look like he was manned up at first. But then he brought, he made up ground and, you know, at that point, just going to throw it away. Right here, guys, just looking for open seam. I have R1 late, uh, but he plays really good defense. I step up, step up, step up. And at that point, man, I'm just glad I didn't fumble. And, you know, honestly, I'm going to settle for three. I do think about going for this, guys. Um, but at this point, man, you know, my opponent has three. I want to score three. I do get ball at half. I feel like it's a smart decision to make. And we're going to just end up kicking three and tying this ball game up. So right here, guys, back on offense for Jay Wall, and he almost throws up, uh, throws us a book. We do that little side, send five uh, D line pressure, and it comes through. And you know, Eric Berry was kind of baiting that zone. I feel like if he had just thrown it straight up, it would have been a dot. But due to him getting sacked, sending out his running back, almost to throw out a sack interception for Eric Berry. And you know, the, the, I, I really wanted that. As right here, he's gonna run inside zone, and I told you guys, I get kind of fortunate right there. Um, my D line was spread. But we're stay, still able to stop the run for, you know, like two yards, which I'll take any day of the week. Right here, guys, in the 146, going to be blitzing, of course. And the blitz actually doesn't come in, but we are able to make a huge tackle. And when I mean huge, I mean huge tackle. Derrick Henry versus Derwin James is not the matchup. I mean, it is a good matchup for me. I mean, Derrick Henry versus anyone, I should say, is not a good matchup, especially when he has a full head of steam like that. Here we go, boys. Fourth down and one right here. Um, I'm not going to be able to run 146 because, you know, it's just it's a too easy of a running down if he audibles down or even runs inside zone. So we're going to be back in the wide defense right here. And we're doing the same thing, man. We're shifting our D-line to stop the run. 
Uh, we send five, right side is a cover two, and the left side, we have a cover three with a seam flat. And I want to rewind this, boys, because that was really glitchy. So Nandi Awesome Law is going to press his inside receiver for a second, and that throws him off guard. He looks to the out route, and Nandi Awesome Law, man, that seam flat is a bag. Make sure you guys don't have zone drops on when you run that. And the seam flat, basically, when they do these, you know, out route hitch, curl combos, he's going to bump the inside receiver for a second. Most people get caught off guard with that. And then he's going to run to the outside and play that out route. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Seam flats are like whatever. They're hit or miss. I, I Even the defender doesn't know what's going to happen most of the time. But that, for a fact, they run that type of concept. It's really going to throw them off guard, especially when you blitz. So mix in that game, that seam flat for sure when you play these trips, guys. Right here, we're going to just hit this Keenan Allen playmaker. And honestly, you guys may be wondering, why is Pav using playmaker on Keenan Allen? Or why is he even using Keenan Allen? For one, he's a Cal Berkeley bear. Shot my bears. And for two, he's actually really glitchy, man. He's six foot two. Great route running. Great, uh, you know, rack. He's going to be able to make some nice, uh, you know, yards after the catch. And just honestly, he just seem, feels really glitchy. He's a route runner. I like to, you know, throw in some extra abilities sometimes. And, you know, I'll show you guys those later on. And yeah, man, I mean, he's a new card. He's never had 99 speed before. So I thought, you know what? Why not use him for once? He's right here, guys. We're going to just try to hit him with a stretch. A nice stretch to the outside. And Derrick Henry can't pick up a block for us, man. Why do we do that? I mean, honestly, Derrick Henry should be getting the ball right there. It is the red zone. But, I mean, he had an easy block and he couldn't get it done for us. I will say, boys, that is not the new 99 Henry. I definitely need a cop of man, King Henry. As he's going to actually set us, set us the block up right here. We are down to the one yard line. This is King Henry time. And Psych, I lied. He ends up going to goal line, and I feel like stretch is an easy call right here, boys. And it is Kamara to the end zone. Great, great possession, I guess you could say. I mean, a great defense leading to a great offensive touchdown. Kamara spikes that football. His signature is super dope. And honestly, boys, we are in the driver's seat right here. He's going to try to hit us with this cover three bomb, and we know it's coming. We man up Namdi Awesome One. He absolutely bags that. We're on all over the crosser, but he gets an inaccurate throw out of bounds, which I don't think I would have picked that off, guys. But in reality, I mean, it's still not the read to make, I think. But who knows, man? Favre is just that bad on the run. If he has Dak or something, that might be a dot. Right here, guys, just manning up some people. Got some zones going on, and this is a really nice defense. And he gets cheated. So I actually had 20 flats. So that's why the uh, flat route to the left side was so open. Um, if I had maybe mixed in like a 10, that would have been really nice defense. But he does get cheated. Here we go. Big fourth down, boys. Let's see if we can lock up one time and get that fluke and use it to our advantage. Because right here, we're going to run the same defense again. This time I have a purple. That's a 10. And I do send two. Call it cheesy, whatever you want. But we're going to swoop down low. Jalen Ramsey, can he make a play? That's the new Ramsey, and he cannot make a play. Great dot. I can't even hate. Uh, that's just a cover three beater. Ramsey almost played out of his mind, though. Like, you've seen him kind of like, he got slow at the end. I don't know what had happened, if he was tired or that's just not going to be played. But, you know, there was a nice chance. Ramsey has hit power that he could have played that. He could have got lucky for me one time. Right here, we're going to blitz, and we're absolutely obliterate Derrick Henry. Honestly, guys, I know Derrick Henry air trick is nice, but if you run trips, I feel like trips players should, you know, use a smaller running back, maybe a Barry, maybe a Camara, of course. I know these guys like to use Camara out wide. It's right here. We're going to send this pressure and get a nice sack. But like I said, man, I feel like they should use like a Barry or smaller type, even a Dree Archer, man. Um, because in trips, like if they run inside zone, I feel like you want a smaller running back to navigate the holes. Um, these D linemen are nice and 99 overalls now. Uh, they could easily just stick their hand out and tackle you. So if you run trips, maybe that's something to take note of if you do run Derrick Henry. He's right here, Jay Wall's just going to run the ball. He almost ends up getting it first, but I think his main uh, goal on that was just to get three. He was almost on the brink of losing of his field goal if he you know, would have taken a sack. Very smart call. I probably would have done the same thing. He's right here, boys. David Akers, he doesn't miss. Kick is up, and it is good. It's an easy field goal. If we could get any type of points before half, we're looking really good. We do get ball at half as well. So after getting back on first down, boys, we are in the middle of the field, which is, like I said so many times, I hate it, but we were able to dot up and throw this nice corner out to Andre J. So right here, man, just trying to get some nice route combos. This middle inside seam is just going to clear out some stuff in the middle of the field. And I low-key had maybe the corner off. I took a step to the left. We get a bad animation on the playmaker. And the thing to note, guys, is I have no timeouts at this point. So I'm going no huddle, man. And I have this nice little route combo. It's just a nice, you know, uh, zone beater. Just a nice 
space. He's right here, we're going to playmaker right. And that's Ricky Jackson in zone. He's not doing anything for him. And that's Keenan Allen securing us three and three plays. It was actually a huge uh, drive right there. I feel like it was three to four plays. It was actually four plays, excuse me. The first play, I ended up throwing it away. Um, you know, getting a field goal right there is huge. I know he has a little bit of time left, but he's not going to be able to get anything with 11 seconds in this game. With zone drops, with the 99 overalls and everything, the sheds. It's just no point to even try to get points. It's right here, guys. My home main goal out of half is to put him away, put away drive. And that's what we're going to start off with a run. If you know how I play at this point, you know I like to, you know, kind of control the clock. I could play high pace if I really want to, but I feel like there's no point, especially when I got a lead like this. You know, take my time with it. Make him work to come back in this game because, you know, I've, I've, we could say that, like, I've outplayed him at, to this point. It's right here. We're going to set up a dot play right here. Um, I have Kittle on this out route short and elite. 99 overall Kittle, 98 overall speed with that Niners theme team. Go cop him, boys. He is a must-have, especially if you rock Niners 50. What makes Kittle also great is his possession archetype. One AP for short and elite. Short and elite is like the meta for the tight end right now, guys, if you didn't know. You can use him in trips for the crossers, the post, uh, for bunch on any type of corner route. Uh, you know, what's it called? That one play, bench pivot. Short and elite is the move. It's right here. Everyone is open, man. We actually just dialed up the perfect play for the blitz. And that's what I like about Seattle. The uh, Jets doesn't have that play. And it's not only for that one play. It's really for that play and clear out. Um, but, you know, you could really mix in and run a sy systematic bunch. You know, easy check downs here and there. It's all a guessing game, man. It really is all a guessing game. It's right here, guys. We're going to just flip our play, call mesh post, and there, there is George Kittle breaking tackles. I believe I'm on conservative in this game. And I'm not, I don't know what to use, man. All Madden is a whole different type of game and compared to All Pro. Let me know if I should be on balance or conservative. Obviously, I'll make my own decision. But I kind of want to know, like, what, what's the pros and cons? Obviously, I know the trucking and all that type of stuff. But, you know, how many times have you fumbled is what I'm trying to uh, refer to. Because some people say they fumble a lot. Some people say they don't fumble at all. And I've seen a little bit of both. So I need to know conservative or balance. It's right here, man. We're going to run this trap. And he really can't stop this trap to this point in this game. Um, whether it be the RPO dumping it out on a screen pass. Or simply just up the gut, man. He cannot stop this RPO trap. Right here, we're going to run mesh post. Our playmaker on R1. And that's just so easy, man. Talk about perfect plays for the blitz. Uh, I guess, I don't know if it, I quick hike J Wall or his adjustments were registered. But that was just beautiful, if you ask me. No flat route right there. We're able to just simply throw, catch and throw to Keenan Allen. It's right here, guys. We're in the cheese play. We all know and love. PA boot over. Easy playmakers. I'm not even going to take the chance to roll out, you know, hit, get hit stick, get fumbled. There's a lot, you know, when you roll out and PA boot over, there's a lot of good that could happen. And there's a lot of bad that could happen. I've seen it. Um, it's a meta at this point. So I'm just going to take my seven yards, keep that clock moving. And, you know, notice how much time I've already taken off in this third quarter, boys. Right here, I'm going to go to the run out of strong H wing. And in reality, this is a move every time. But I do have really bad stick right here. As we're going to see, I'm going to call stretch. And I just literally run into my O-line. I had the outside. I kind of had the inside. And I had the, you know, intermediate. The outside and the inside. And I chose literally the wrong hole. Ran into Trent Brown. And, you know, instead of it being an easy first down, the clock keeps going. Most importantly, the first down factor. Um, I end up not getting the first on that down right there. But it's all good. It's still third down and three. The clock is still ticking. Um, and I'm going to go back to a nice play right here. Tight end crosser for George Kittle. Playmaker coming underneath. I, I found this. I want to say I found this play. But, like, this is a nice play. It's right here. We're gonna, we would have had Kittle. I'm going to rewind this real quick, boys. And peep. Just look at Kittle. Just look at Kittle. So, j -Wall ends up running a cover two and leaving Kittle completely unguarded. There was so much stress on the playmaker. As you see right here, he kind of just dips down with his user at that last second. I should have waited, pass led Kittle up and left, and you see me clip it because you know I I know I missed a read when I when I you know when if I clip something I've just got to rewatch it back later on, and I'm glad I watched that. So just to wait a little bit and even playmaker him backwards, you know I just threw it like without even playmaking him. I thought Keenan Allen was gonna get a good rack, but in reality it wasn't that at all. Um, and you know next time I'll try to hopefully make the right read. That's right here, man. We're gonna be sending. It's Mike Blitz three, pressure off that right side, run a little cover two, cover three action to the left side, and he makes a nice dump down read. 
And that's something about TNC, man. They always make the right read whether they know to take their yards down low or if they know, you know, the user is too low and just to hit them over the top. They always make the right read on these, you know, high low reads. As right here, this is probably going to be the last play of the third quarter and he just gets it off and he runs the same play again. We get some nice pressure from Ahmad Brooks. El Toro going off, man. I know a lot of you ask, oh, is El Toro good? Is El Toro good? Yes, it's insane and wide. Like I said, I don't know how it plays in All-Pro. I haven't played All-Pro in a second, a minute, whatever you want to say. But I know in all Madden, El Toros go off. Everyone uses them. But those three El Toros, you know, add up to a six total of six AP. So nothing at all. You could have your acrobats. You could use your one one step if you want. There's quite a bit of things you could do. It's right here. We're going to send that right side pressure. Great pocket. And another crossing route dot. And Rod Woodson can make a play. And I need to get someone new instead of Rod Woodson. He's super outdated. So far, good drive. But the thing that I really like about that last play is, you know, he was in bounds. So, you know, it's underrated. But 15, solid 15 to 20 seconds are going to come out. Especially because he took his time. It's right here. Easy sheds. Ricky cracks in alongside his partner in crime. Ahmad Brooks once more. El Toro, you got to slap that ability on, boys. Right here, the same thing, man. I'm sending this five-man blitz. Ex actually, end, end up sending the extra man here. And we try to get Beatty with it. And we get Beatty with it. It doesn't matter. He gets a throw out of sack. Or excuse me, a fumble. And we aren't able to recover. I think that was Trent Brown just snagging it out the sky. That hurts, man. That hurts. You know how I feel about Trent Brown as well. I had like three, four people there. But I'm not going to complain about that. Just on to the next play. But for sure, 100%, that would have just iced the game right then and there. Right here, man, I'm in 1-4-6. And J-Wall knows, you know, he's on the brink of field goal range. You know, a 10-yard sack definitely takes him out of field goal range. So he's going to make make a, sm a smart play call and run. And low-key, he had some running lanes. I got a little scared there when I was in the game. But we're going to be able to hold him to three. And this is it, man. A couple first downs, and we are out of here. $2,000 for my team, my pro -Am team. More importantly, a dub and a, you know, a kind of rivalry at this point, man. And I know, boys, that hit the tag says TTV Fancy, but, you know, obviously, J-Wall is using Fancy's account. They are boys, TNC brothers. It's right here. We're going to dump it out to this little um, RPO again, and, you know, we stay in bounds. Huge, huge, huge. We stay in bounds, and look at that stat line, 13 to 15. Not that many yards, but I will take that any day of the week. As long as we're efficient, as long as we're in the lead, I don't care how we get it done. It's right here, man. We go from strong H wing to goal line. So we have a two running back, three wide receiver audible down. And we are able, we are not able to get that first down. He actually shoots the gap. And honestly, it's so, so random when someone shoots a gap in goal line. Like it happens sometimes, it happens not sometimes. And you know, he actually makes me lose a yard. So that was a huge play by him. Here we go, man. Third and two. I want to say this is like a crucial down. It is a cr pretty crucial down, but at this point, I'm 100% going to go for it. If I get put in that spot and we're going back to our bread and butter corner out right side playmaker coming underneath and he just completely forgets about playmaker and Keenan Allen unfortunately is going to get tackled out of bounds um that's the only bad thing I'd say I shouldn't have been juking and jiving like that it's super dumb one hit stick fumble and he's back in the game just just low IQ play right there I, I just kind of got a little too hype you know it happens to us so right here boys we are going to run Think about run 01 trap, but we actually audible to the RPO buck. The shout out Bobby V. And look at the running lanes we have. And no one picks up that one dude. I believe that was Rod Woodson. Oh my gosh. That's just a gamer of a run. And when I mean gamer, just GG's in the chat. But he can't pick up that one guy. Three guys can't pick up one guy. Bruh. So right here, man. I don't want to run two straight downs. So we decide to go to the air and, you know, try to ice him for good. And right here, we're going to just go with a nice clear out route combo. This out route has short and elite. He cooks him a little bit. And, bro, what the heck just happened? He doesn't have one step. I guess he has. He does have acrobat, obviously, not guess. But, you know, I guess Shade Up Man just completely bagged that. Darius Slay goes crazy. And, you know, I have short and elite against no one step. That 100% of the time should be wide open. Nonetheless, I still can't throw that. I know better. And just like that, my opponent is literally back in the game. And you know, this could be very this could be very bad, man. This could be very, very bad. It's right here. We're gonna send the heat and he just dots us up, man. A nice dot after a great defensive stop always hurts, man. Like whenever I throw a pick or I just you know get stopped and the opponent just dots us, 
dots me. I'm like, bro, am I going to lose this game? What's about to happen? There's a lot of thoughts run through my head. It's right here. Another thing to look at, boys, is he has a two-minute warning, no huddle glitch. Um, we all know if they are in like that two-minute warning scenario. They get to the line like that. And, you know, thankfully for us, j -Well is still dialing up some plays. And he would have had a touchdown to the left side crossing route and even the right side corner route. We don't play good defense at all. Those 10 flats just get abused. But thankfully for us, our sheds go huge. We get two man, two man coming in free. I did send five again, and it's been a lot of send five this whole game. And that's the thing about those El Toros. They're going to come in, especially if my opponents are dialing up long, developing plays. And I should have ran to the hitch. I had a pretty good user. I just don't know. I think that uh, post would have been a dot. Let me know what you guys think if I should have just ran to the hitch or if I kind of if I made the right user play. And man, this is as sweaty as it gets. I'm even sweaty just watching and recording this right now, boys. Um, it's a third and six. We do call a timeout, kind of regain our composure, you know, snap back into it. You know, a lot of crazy plays just happened in a short amount of time. I know it could be overwhelming. And we're in the one, four, six, third down and six. If I can make some good adjustments, we're going to be walking out of here with a W. And I do make some decent adjustments. The pressure comes in. We get... We fall on the ground. I'm going to have to rewind that. There's so many crazy things that just happened right there, boys. So what I want you guys to look at is my left side corner falling to the ground. I want you to see, look at the post that just stops running. And I want you to look at how close my user was to that play. You see right here, Nambi falls down. And if I would have took a step to the left, I picked that off. Uh, thankfully, thankfully to God, we get a low ball and accurate or whatever that was. Whatever it was, I need it. I mean, I should have picked it off, but in reality, it shouldn't have even been that close. I believe that should have been just a wide open dot. Terrible defense by us. But in reality, I thought my guy would have came in free. He falls on the crown and trips on nothing, man. So here we go, man. The stage is set. Fourth and six. Two timeouts. 27 seconds. 18-yard line. Try saying that fast. And he needs a dot to stay alive. And maybe even a dot to tie this game up. And, you know, trust me, I'm so nervous at this point. Like I said, I have teammates watching, rooting me on. I don't want to let them down. I don't want to let y'all down. Um, and here we go. He is in the bunch tight end. I don't know if I would, if I like this, man. You're, you're an awesome trips player. You're one of the best trips players uh, in the game. Top, top one, top two for sure. And we get some crazy disengages. He actually had a dot. Left corner, left zig route. I'm going to rewind it real quick, boys, because I have to. But going back to what I said, I don't know if I like him in bunch tight end for his uh, for the game, man. That's right here. Like I said, he had the zig route and the corner route. I don't think he had the corner route because the heat came in on time. The soft squat played it. But nonetheless, GG's in the chat. We played a really stellar game on offense and defense. Him, not so much on offense. He played pretty decent defense. We'll take the dub. GG's at J-Wall. One and one. Obviously, he his game is just off the roof. Way more important. But, I mean, it feels good you know tie it up a little bit i guess you could say so there it is boys what a great game if you did enjoy what you watched please smash that like button comment share subscribe let me know what you guys think of the alternating angles and the some uh some breakdowns i had i feel like that was an amazing game once more shout out to my my bro j wall for the great game um we ended up winning the pro-am series three to two i come home with twelve hundred dollars Pretty nice day on the job. Shout out to Mutthead, like always, for these tournaments and all these awesome opportunities. And, you know, just to make me, you know, be able to post this to the YouTube and a high quality game, me versus Jaywa. Till next time, boys, I'm signing out. Peace, much love to y'all. We out.